We're joined by Mimi Allaham, analyst and political commentator, joining us from Perth, and Mr. Harry Fox, investigative journalist out of New York. Thank you very much to both of you. Let's begin with uh, Ms. Allaham. Uh, if you could please uh, tell us uh, what is... Uh, what are the different aspects of this very unusual encounter? Well, uh, for one thing, the U.S. military has no business being in Al Tanf. Uh, this, they have no business being in Syria at all. It's a completely illegal occupation that is against international law. Um, so, the act against a civilian passenger jet is really an act of terrorism, and uh, you, you know they're acting like pirates of the air. Uh, potentially what they wanted to happen was to trigger Syrian air defenses to attack this passenger jet. You know, it's in a similar vein to the way that uh, Israel uh, kind of caused the Syrian air defenses to shoot down a Russian jet by uh, strafing very close to it. Um, so that's potentially what they intended to happen to these civilians in this airline there. So um, really the, uh, the objective has to be to get the Americans out of Al Tanf. Uh, perhaps the United Nations can make a statement about that. Thank you very much. Actually, you raise a very interesting point there. Let's bring in Mr. Fox. What is your opinion? Uh, how have these two uh, fighter jets endangered the lives of uh, the passengers on uh, a civilian aircraft? And uh, also, uh, what business do they have to do in a, in a corridor that is specifically uh, used for uh, commercial planes? Well, when I train my mind on this one, uh, there's a number of scenarios. The previous uh, commentator made a good one. Um, also, you know, Trump may be looking for some sort of provocation. You know, he's uh, consider it like a piece of meat that he's going to throw to the hungry Jewish news networks in the United States to distract from these riots that are happening in Portland, Seattle, and soon to be all over the place. Uh, these riots, by the way, are orchestrated right out of Tel Aviv. Antifa is, of course, an Israeli intelligence operation, and I've been you know, very vocal about that, that none of this stuff happens by accident. Americans don't get off their sofa unless there's very heavy financing, by the way, that we pay for. So it looks like it might be a situation where Trump has already has experience when he does military actions against middle uh, against either Syria or Iran. The, the Zionist news media in the United States says, "Oh, he's he's our hero now." So they go from he's a racist, a, a xenophobic. Uh, bigot to he's a hero because he bombed a Syrian uh, airport or something like that. So it's a, it could be a piece of meat uh, and, you know, he's not going to get much uh, resistance from the so-called left or liberal class because in America, if it's not an LGBTQ issue, they have no clue or care about it anyway. So he could bomb anyone he wants and he's certainly not going to get any uh, flack from the liberal, so-called liberal, so-called left uh, gutted, shallow, superficial class uh, posing as liberal, basically. Thank you very much. Back to Ms. Alam. Uh, now, uh, informed sources have told us uh, that these planes, uh, the fighter jets, approach the civilian aircraft twice in a span of six minutes. Well, uh, the first time it was pretty obvious that they uh, were able to identify that this was an ordinary passenger plane. Why the second time? I think the objective was to terrorize the passengers. Uh, it was to kind of... Uh, bully or elbow Iran out of, Iran, uh, out of Syrian airspace, uh, potentially to try to cause an international incident. Um, and, you know, I have to also agree with the previous commentator that Antifa is uh, a puppet of Israel and the, the riots that are happening in the U.S. is really um, an Israeli color revolution. And, you know, this is, might be, again, Trump trying to appease those Zionist masters of his by creating some kind of provocation against Iran and Syria. Thank mm -hmm. you very much. Mr. Vox, uh, don't you think that there was uh, quite a dangerous move because it was not only Iranian passengers. We had from different national nationalities on that plane, including Lebanese, lots of Lebanese people on that plane, putting Lebanese lives on danger. Is that something uh, not anywhere near a red line or anything for Trump? No, there are no red lines. When you're talking about uh, our subservience, you know, 
Look, we, we used to have this idea, we used to have this question in the United States for the past, well, prior to 20 years, but less so in the last 20 years. The question was, is, is Israel the, on, uh, the, the, the pit bull in the region who's there to secure our geostrategic ass, assets or an interest, right? Uh, and then that we keep them on a leash. Well, it's clear that is not the case. We are the, are the pit bull. Israel is holding the leash. And how do we know that? Well, the old saying that you can't say these things because they're anti-Semitic, well, they're true. They control the media, they control the political class, they control everything. They control every facet of American life. It's not anti-Semitic. It's just a clearly observable fact. And until we start recognizing that fact, they're going to ring every last nickel out of this place and move over to China and set up shop there to ring every last nickel out of China too. So the bottom line is, nope, there's no red lines. They'll kill anyone, anytime, anywhere. For Israel, no problem. Uh, well, back to Ms. Alam. In Lebanon, uh, we've heard different officials voicing concerns, saying that they will be uh, pursuing this matter legally through international uh, means. How far do you think that can go? Well, let's not forget, uh, there was an incident, uh, you know, a few decades ago where the U.S. did shoot down a Iranian passenger jet, and they never apologized. Uh, they never acknowledged or in, there was no recourse for that. So in this case, you know, in that case, hundreds of people died. So I don't see that there's any going to be any recourse for the U.S. in this case either. Um, and they've been acting like a rogue state for, it's, you know, since World War II. And the, unfortunately, nobody's brave enough to stand up to them except for Iran and Syria. Thank you very much. And Mr. Vox, your final comments. We're running out of time. Well, uh, I think we're seeing the collapse of all of these narratives. I think we're seeing the collapse of the, like I, I call it, the Holocaust industrial complex and the anti-Semitism industrial complex. and and the collapse of the American hegemonic grip around the necks of everybody. So the entire world order is collapsing. Uh, the, what's going to emerge out at the other end? It would be nice if uh, the countries, uh, the other countries of the world decided to just abandon the United States and have a little bit of dignity, and then we wouldn't have this grip. But unfortunately, they're going along with this pandemic, which is Israeli Make no mistake about it, this is Israeli intelligence did the pandemic too, because nobody is able to go around with impunity through any border and spray whatever they want to. So this is, and nobody else has that sort of sense of supremacy mixed with a, a persecution complex that would enable you to have that kind of like diabolical nature in order to pull it off in the first place. So uh, people have to wake up, and uh, but they're all getting paid off. And so the question is, is will we continue to have enough money to pay off world leaders? Because you don't pay off a world leader, nobody cares about Israel. It's a money deal. So if we can keep off paying people off, then we'll keep uh, with our grip around everyone's neck. If the money runs out, people wake up and say, you know what? Forget about Israel. Forget about the United States. But it, it's a money. It's about money. Yeah.